to make necessary changes in order to manage the ever-changing dynamic of the correctional system while ensuring that a process exists to meet and confer over the effects of such changes. Leave time is not considered work time for overtime purposes. These MOUs confirm, uh, conform, I should state, to the statutory ban of employees' use of leave for overtime pay. Leave days. The MOUs provide two non-cashable leave days per year. These days expire if they are not used within one year. These days will have minimal, if any, fiscal impact on the state's uh, on the state as, and are small concessions given the significant pension savings achieved through these MOUs. I have with me a number of individuals to testify and answer any questions you may have. I have with me Mr. Ronald Yang, Director of DPA, and Mr. Michael Cohen, Finance Director. Thank you, Senator. Appreciate the uh, summary. Uh, we'll go to finance right now. Uh, Mr. Cohen, welcome. It's nice to have you here. And uh, we wish uh, Ms. Ingenito well in her new assignment. Um, do you want to give us a Department of Finance's summary? Sure, I can uh, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, Senator Correa um, summarized the, the major provisions of the MOUs um, in terms of the fiscal um, in 2010-11, uh, combined with the uh, furlough days for these units, um, in total, um, $528 million will be saved. Of that, $323 million from the general fund. In the upcoming budget year, $209 million of savings, $111 million um, from the general fund. These uh, bargaining uh, agreements represent about 25% of the state's workforce, and so um, in approving these agreements, uh, the legislature would be bringing the last quarter of um, the state's workforce under uh, current bargaining ag agreements. Um, obviously, for the administration, the, um, the continuation of um, the move to have employees pay an increasing share of their uh, pension costs was an important component. Um, and as well as the uh, personal leave uh, program, the PLP, um, for 12 months in order to provide uh, general fund budget savings. All right. Well, and we want to hear from DPA. So, with these contracts, when these contracts are approved, uh, we will have no outstanding represented uh, employees with, that are working without a contract. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, can you just, before we go on, um, tell me how these uh, MOUs uh, compare to the ones that were negotiated in the summer of uh, 2010, last summer? Sure. Um, clearly, the, um, the SEIU deal uh, that was um, approved by the legislature uh, in October was uh, the model for um, these contracts, and so um, five of the contracts outside of uh, Unit 6 for correctional officers, I would say, uh, really sort of follows that model of achieving savings the correctional officer contract actually goes further um, for two reasons one in delaying the implementation of uh, the health care uh, benefits it sort of ramps back up over time to uh, the 80 percent 80 percent formula as well as senator Craya mentioned the elimination of um, the POF to the defined contribution plan uh, on the unit six contract we estimate um, about 4.7 percent net savings as a percent of payroll in the upcoming budget year for this contract. For instance, uh, the SEIU deal, if it was applied to um, CCPOA in a similar manner, uh, would have only achieved 2.5 percent of savings in the upcoming budget year. So that's um, the Unit 6 contract is the one that deviates the most from the SEIU framework and it actually achieves uh, greater savings. Alrighty, thank you. Uh, does uh Department of Personnel Administration want to give a summary also? Yeah, good morning, well, Chair. Welcome. And, and fellow senators. And senators. Uh, I'm Ron Yank from DPA, and we are a sponsor of the bill. Um, I really don't have anything to add to what Senator Correa and, and Mr. Cohen had to say, uh, but I sit ready to answer all kinds of uh, questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Um, and, sir, you are? I'm Tom Bayer of Department of Personnel Administration. Thank you. Okay. Well. Members, what, what's your pleasure? We can take our uh, testimony pro and con and then have member discussion, or do you have any questions you want to get on the table now? All righty, then we'll go to uh, testimony in favor of the bill. Those in favor of SB 151, do you want to come forward now, please? And we need a couple chairs. Mr. Cohen, don't go too far. Or you, Mr. Yang, either. 
Maybe that, how about that bar right there, yeah. Good morning, Craig Brown on behalf of both the California Correctional Peace Officers Association, California Statewide Law Enforcement Association. We're in support of this bill. I think uh, finance described many of the differences in the CCPOA contract. Um, one issue that has become controversial has been the leave cap. Um, frankly, that's a red herring. The relief cap hasn't been enforced since I was in corrections at least in 1998. Uh, when I retired from state employees, I had more leave on the books than the cap provided because it hadn't been enforced for years. The cap requires that you give employees an opportunity to take the time off. That is impossible in corrections. The budget process decides how much time people can take off. You budget for typically three weeks per officer vacation. That's all an officer can take, no matter what they have on the books. The cap hasn't been enforced for years, and nobody can remember when it's really been enforced. Um, and you can solve that problem by simply putting loads of money in the corrections budget to allow people to take the vacation that they've earned. Furloughs has substantially complicated that issue. Um, they've earned a pro over 300 hours that are on the books and not been able to take it. They've worked, their correctional officers have worked their furlough days. The only thing furloughed has been their paycheck. So uh, we urge your support of this MOU. Thank you. Next, please. Pat Whalen, Ellison Wilson Advocacy, on behalf of California Attorneys, Administrative Law Judges, and Hearing Officers in State Employment. That's CASE, Bargaining Unit 2. It's difficult economic times. There's some difficult concessions in this bill, but we're in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, members, Ted Toppin for the Professional Engineers in California Government in support. Thank you, Mr. Toppin. Uh, you, sir? Good morning. Chris Voigt on behalf of CAPS, California Association of Prof Professional Scientists, Unit 10, here in support of the bill. Thank you. Stephanie Burry on behalf of SCIU Local 1000 in support. All righty. Mr. Cremens? Tim Cremens, Operating Engineers, uh, representing Bar Unit 13, the bulk of which are State Department of Water Resources workers, highly technical, highly skilled, and actually suffering vacancy rates uh, for low pay. Thank you. Uh, other testimony in favor? Is there testimony in favor? Opposition? Any opposition? Members, do I have a motion on the bill? I move the motion. Senator Alquist, thank you. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, uh, then we will call the roll. Uh, members, uh, this, uh, let me just specify because uh, the uh, analysis shows that it's eligible for suspense. There are, however, uh, uh, budget year and uh, d uh, issues that need to be addressed sooner rather than later. So we're not putting this into suspense. We're sending it to the floor. I do have uh, a question, if I may. Senator Steinberg. You call the roll. I just think. Um, like to get on the record here if possible when it comes to the pension reform that is encompassed within all of the agreements uh, is there a projection for the long-term savings for the retirement system in the state of California can Mr. Cohen or Mr. Cray or somebody uh, speak to the impact of this across the board pension reform uh, one year final comp or highest comp to three years, lower retirement formulas, higher age, you know, and higher, higher age, contributions. higher contributions, all that combined, what that means in terms of, in terms of savings to the retirement system in the state? For all the bargaining units. For all the bargaining units, correct. Uh, I don't have a current number for you, but certainly we can get that. Um, it's... Easy to say, though, that it's it's going to be uh, a, a huge number over time, and it's really just a matter of how long uh, you go out. As you know, um, the real savings come with the reduced um, retirement benefits as uh, new workers uh, come on board. And so uh, depending on um, how quickly sort of the, the workforce turns over, uh, the savings, though, uh, easily will be in the hundreds of millions of dollars over time. Se Senator Walters, it it isn't um, a lot of the pension piece for the new hires, and isn't it something that's going to be realized as savings maybe 25, 30 years from now because it's going to be for new hires? Well, it's um, basically as soon as a worker um, comes into the door, we're, we start generating savings because CalPERS um, will start recalculating their uh, annual cost for the state based on 
um, that person's accrued um, cost for their pension will be less than an equivalent person uh, under the old system. So um, in order to get the full savings, certainly you need the entire workforce uh, to turn over, and that you know would be roughly 30 years. But um, basically the way our pension system is set up, the only way you're going to get these types of savings is to start at some point. And so um, there's going to – any of these changes would take – uh, decades to sort of reach their full cap, absolutely. Just a, a one little clarification on uh, the increased uh, pension contributions begin with the enactment of the contract, do they not? So in each of these uh, bargaining units where there's increased uh, pay in, paying into the pension benefit um, of fewer holiday pay – or fewer holidays, et cetera, those are savings that we capture in the budget year. Absolutely. Uh, we were speaking to sort of the, the rollback of the SB 400 benefits, right. but for all current employees, they start contributing uh, 3 to 5% uh, more in, in their uh, – in, in costs. And so the state offsets that 3 to 5%, and that starts right away um, beginning with their first paycheck under these MOUs. Se Se Senator Pavley? Sorry. That's all right. You, you're welcome no, to No, I speak. just wanted to – and make sure I understood this, and that would move them to, to uh, percent and up to 11 th That's right. Um, it will vary by bargaining unit, but 8 to 11 percent of uh, an, an employee's uh, you know, salary will uh, go to fund uh, their pension. Yeah. All righty. You know, I would just say to have all the workforce now working <coughs> under contract rather than uh, hanging out without uh, contracts that uh, spell out um, – all these uh, details is is much better. I applaud the governor for getting this done early in his term, and I know he didn't do it all um, by himself. So uh, to Mr. Yang and to Finance Department, it's been a big effort, but you know here we are uh, toward the end of April, and we will now have 100 percent of the um, represented workforce in the state of California uh, with clear work rules understood and their, their contracts understood. So that's a good step for all of us. Any other comments, members? Then I'm going to uh, call the roll. This is uh, due pass to the Senate floor. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Walters? No. Walters, no. Alquest? Aye. Alquest, aye. Emerson? Yes. Emerson, no. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Runner? No. Runner, no. Steinberg? Aye. Steinberg, aye. Alrighty, the vote is 6-3. That bill is out. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator Correa. Very good.